still go 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 hustle out hustle every single day i'll be making moves till i'm buried in my grave to the system i don't wanna be a slave i've been doing it my way or the highway and in the driveway is a nice range cuz i'm going through the climb i invite pain you never hear me Nah, I don't complain. Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain. Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Ryder Siggity. And this is Ryder's dad. But my name is Mike, but everyone knows me as Ryder's dad. So, uh, this is the He Man's J Day, day two edit. And here I'm just getting completely ruined by, uh, roosted by Ryan, who we just saw our cool handshake. So uh, Ryan gets the whole shot. I'm in fourth right now, or fifth now. I make my way into fourth, and I'm feeling good about this one. This is the first race for day two, and uh, Jake's get around me, but I feel like I can keep with them since we're going to the woods, and that's one of my strong points. So this is uh, the day two video of a two two uh, two day race, and each day is a separate round, pain points uh, completely. Uh, for day one and day two. Nice jump by uh, Kyle, right? Yeah. That was pretty cool. So if you guys haven't already checked out that day one video, don't forget to check it out because it's a lot different. Yeah, some of the differences is the track is different. Um, and we got some highlights. Uh, and it's all highlights just like this. I mean, we're going to let the first lap kind of run pretty much solid through because that's where the, the most um, action is. And it's only like a six, seven minute lap. And we also got some stuff with Cooper Webb, who raced on day one, and that you know that's the Supercross champion Cooper Webb, and we got a uh, his full interview where he actually says some really cool things on the interview. So if you haven't seen day one, check it out. And actually, if you haven't checked out our ooh, that was pretty wild there, huh? Yeah. So if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, we have a lot of GNCC racing, which is a lot tighter action, like really power buying tons of people. And then we also have some National Enduros, which is just all single track. And uh, we got a whole mix of stuff. So you should check out the YouTube channel and subscribe if you, uh, if you want to be notified of when we post new stuff. Yeah, definitely. Oh, here, Jigs gets a little squirrely. Um, and I'm just feeling great right here. I mean, I'm on his tail. I'm feeling like this pace is a good pace for me. My factory connection suspension is working great. I mean, I'm not getting kicked anywhere. It's just tracking straight, and it's really good. Especially with the spring shock and fork and the linkage. It's so good. Yeah, a lot of people say that that linkage and spring fork is the uh, plusher of the rides. Maybe not as crucial in the motocross. I don't know. But in the woods, yeah. Here, Jigs goes to the right, and I go to the left. And Jigs does have the better line, definitely. As you see, he even makes a pass on Kyle, who is way ahead of us, which was really nice. So I don't know if you know about GoPro cameras, but if you're just 10 feet away from someone, they look 100 feet away. If they're 50 feet away, you can't even see. As a matter of fact, in the video, when we get people that are 50 feet away, we just cut the video and start over because it's so much better with when there's action. All right, gonna eat my words. Where's the next rider? Yeah. So. Oh, that uh, was why. Yep. Yeah, that oh, was a cool wheelie. I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also after the wheelie, uh, it's a little late now, but you can see on this course there's a lot of loose baseball-sized rocks in a ton of places, and it gets a little scary when they're in the turns and stuff. So uh, right here, I caught back up to Jigs and Kyle, and we're going onto the motocross track now. So we're gonna see how I can do trying to keep up with them on the moto. Yeah, so moto is definitely not your strong point. As a matter no. of fact, you usually go to the moto track maybe three times a year <laughs> yeah. at most, and that's a little hard to get good at something only three times a year. So, and these kids really launch it. Yeah. I mean, right here, everyone's pretty much doing it, but we're going to get to some pretty big doubles that just didn't seem to be your forte. So, um, I don't know, again, if you've checked out Ryder's YouTube channel, but actually in the month of June, he got 62,000 minutes of view time. So, obviously a lot of people liking it, and I thank you very much if you're one of them. We're also uh, going to post a video very shortly. It's, it's done, we just haven't posted it yet. And this is not clickbait, it's really how you can get free training with Yamaha, and they have special days that they do this, even if you don't have a Yamaha with Stu Baylor, Jason Raines, Randy Hawkins, Rachel Archer, Mike Witowski, 
Lane Michael, and I'm sure I forgot some of the people, but literally you can too, even if you don't have a Yamaha, and you can actually get it for free. So like and subscribe and notify, get, choose the notify bell, and when we post that video, you'll know about it. And again, that's not clickbait, we promise. We, if you look at our videos, they're 99 to 100% all likes, and if they were clickbait, we wouldn't get that. And we're also compiling a video comparing all the different kinds of racing, meaning uh, that, that we know of, like National Enduro, Regular Hair Scramble, Sprint Enduro, J-Day, GNCC, and you, you can kind of figure out what is the next type of racing you might want to try. So moving on a little bit, I kept with these guys better than I thought I would, to be honest, on the moto track, and uh, we're in the Enduro Cross section, which is another really cool thing about these J Days. If you haven't watched the day one video, is we talk about they have these Enduro Cross sections at each race, and they're really fun. And there's like jumps and lines in there, and that was one of the few laps that did hit the jumps, though, sadly, because I really didn't have the confidence to hit them. But hopefully next time or next day that we do, I'll hit all the jumps on the Enduro Cross track. So a little later in the video, we're going to show you in slow motion and pause a really clear picture of how some of these kids launch off of these jumps and the difference between how they're doing it and how Ryder's doing it. And for sure, part of the reason Ryder's not doing it is because he's just not comfortable. But we really analyze the seat bounce with the slow motion and we zoom in and you can see the difference in, in technique on seat bounce and how to really pick up some air. I'm feeling so great on my Yamaha right now that I'm just waiting for any rider in front of me to make a mistake because I'm trying to get and make as many passes as I can. Before the moto track, right? Yeah, before the moto track. So this is moto one of two, right? Maybe we said that. Yeah, this is moto one of two, the like we said earlier. Here, uh, Kyle makes a little mistake. I wasn't able to get around him, but then a lapper kind of cuts him off and I make a turn through the woods. And I take that jigs, the line that jigs actually passed Kyle on earlier, and now I'm on a roll down this hill, and I'm in the lead. I see these people up front, though. I see this kid. He's got uh, nothing wrong with it, but he's paddling his feet, and I'm a little worried that I wouldn't be able to get around him. And you can hear, you can hear Kyle's bike right next to me, so I'm happy I did get around him soon, because if I would have taken maybe half a second longer, Kyle would have passed me. When you look back, was he in the was he in that video right there, or do you, is he not? You can't see him because like the GoPro is a little weird with the uh, with the stabilization feature; it doesn't look back all the way. But I could see him, yeah. So we're gonna just show a couple more highlights here of race one, but race two, at least for us, was way more exciting. Yeah. And yeah, like you know this this is only your second time doing J Day, or maybe your third race J Day. You know did one one day before or half a day before yeah it was like my second day doing J day because of Southwick and you see here oh yeah Kyle's front tire that was scary I mean I thought he, for sure he would have passed me on that straightaway but I held it on a little bit longer and up here like I said not good at moto I didn't commit to that jump and it bit me I come around the outside and I should have protected the inside line but I have a habit of not doing that so Kyle gets around me on the inside, and now I'm behind him. But I'm still not out of the count since we're pretty close. And um, right up here, you see. Watch this left turn. Yeah. Watch I, the roost. If I would have stuck in that outside line, I would have got covered in roost. So thankfully, I started on the outside and cut to the inside of him. But I still got stuck behind him in this uh, enduro cross section. Ooh, in case that. Yeah. So maybe you're considering a J-Day or just curious about a J-Day. So I'll just give you a little, um, my, my opinion of it. And I'm definitely no expert and I don't know if what I saw at this particular J-Day, because this is my first time going to one, is indicative of the way the other races are. But I'd say it's a very well-run series. I would say uh, the caliber overall is just below a GNCC, the way they run them there but definitely above most local series. So it's like right in the middle. And then the turnout is also the same. I think they get about a little over 800 racers per day. Some local series are still getting that. Um, some are getting more, but it's really not just about the turnout. I mean, having a race all the way up in Maine might have been a little bit of a 
problem for some people. But the turnout's good. The way it's run is good. They have an announcer all day long, which was really good. Um, they have live scoring, of course. They uh, they use the uh, Moto Tally, which a lot of series use. Um, it was $30 a person to get in, which seems a little high for a gate fee for a uh, not national event. But it is what it is, $20 to camp. Again, I don't know if they're all $30. And uh, I think I already said this, but it's two 30-minute motos. Uh, and you'll see later some things that they do which are really cool. They actually have a water truck watering the start, which might be pretty common in motocross, but I've never seen it really in hair scrambles. Ever seen that in hair scrambles. I thought that was pretty neat. They do have live scoring, which is nice. You can see on your phone. The announcer, uh, the live scoring doesn't always work right. Like at one point they said Ryder was the overall leader, and you'll hear that a little later in the video. Um, and I knew he wasn't the overall leader, but I was like, all right, well, still nice to hear it. Right here, I do a pretty cool wall run, or at least I thought it was pretty cool. But then I have to hop out of the wall rut and the rut, so I don't uh, hit that kid. But I'm still keeping up with Kyle here, and I'm feeling like a pretty good pace. And I'm still I'm breathing down his neck again, hoping to make a pass, and you'll see if it does happen or if it doesn't. Oh yeah, soon in front of me, some ki uh, someone falls like directly in front of me, and since we we're kind of coming into the same rut, it looks like I um, I cut them off, but I pro or I hit them. But I promise you, I made no contact with the kid on the Kawasaki or the kid on the Husqvarna. The kid on the Husqvarna right here, he fell completely on his own. <laughs> I didn't touch him. So uh, that's the end of Moto 1, but stay guys because there's a whole nother moto and some bonus clips in that moto, which is, could be really exciting. So this is your fourth moto of the weekend, your last moto. You finished fifth overall in the last three. Ooh. Let's see what goes on. Oh yeah, nice roost again on you, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan roosted me today, uh, both motos today, and you saw I had to pull its hair off. I mean, I couldn't see anything. Thankfully, the GoPro can kind of see a little bit. But it was payback because in Moto 1, I didn't realize it, but we were just looking at pictures. And I roosted Ryan both motos <laughs> yesterday. So uh, it was payback. So like we said, this is the second moto of the day. And yesterday, the second moto of the day was way worse than the first moto because of all the moon dust. So I was a little worried about that, but it wasn't bad at all. I mean, the track held up really nice. Especially since they made it so flat for the first one, there wasn't much to get that bumpy. Right here, I make a pass around Kyle. I follow, I follow Van, and Kyle goes in the straightest line, but like we saw a little earlier in the video, sometimes the straightest line isn't the best, and it has a lot of bumps in it. So um, I do make the pass around Kyle, and now I'm behind Van and Ryan. So right now, I'm like really happy. I mean, I'm in third place, kind of far into the race. You see, I just wiped the camera lens, and I'll do it again in like 10 seconds. Oh, I don't thank you for doing that. <laughs> that mud drives me crazy. I don't know why I did it twice, but look, I do it again somewhere around here. So that's Ryan ahead of you, and he's racing two classes today, as Van is. And matter of fact, I hate to say it, but man, Van is killing it. He got seventh <clears throat> overall in the main event. And yeah. here he is racing the mini bike race. Yeah. So he's a, a kid. Well, they're all kids, I guess. But yeah, that's awesome. And I think Ryan actually overall the race that he did. He didn't do the same race as Van, but he overall his. Yeah, and Ryan's coming off with two broken wrists, racing two races a day. I, oh. Ryan goes fishing for squirrels or hunting for squirrels again. Like you see in day one. So don't forget, guys, check out the day one video if you haven't. Yeah. Poor Ryan. So uh, right up here, you'll see, I did rower, I did like the rower exercise. The day before. Yeah, the no, I think it was like two or three days before the race. And my hands got pretty blistery. And Open blisters on, and not your pa on your palms, not necessarily the calluses. Yeah, and you see right here, we uh, taped them up, and my dad knows how to do that because he did the ISD. Yeah, so oh, that beautiful. that was what your hands looked like before the race. Yeah. Oh, there's that cool water truck. So, yeah. so impressed with that. I've never been to a hair scramble where they watered the first turn, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. So you went to the race with blistered hands. It didn't get blistered from the race. The races aren't that hard. Yeah. So, and what about... Go ahead. Yeah. This sign is crazy. You might want to pause this. In New Hampshire, the liquor stores are owned by the state, 
and they have signs like every quarter mile saying, liquor store, open Sundays, pull over now. <laughs> so this is funny, we were just getting dressed, and I guess since the race is on the farm, they have like this pig that roams around, and there was a pig that just started roaming around while we were trying to get dressed, it was funny. So they had some entertainment Saturday night, and uh, one of the things they had was a whip contest, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. It was fun. They threw, like, this was just a practice, but during the actual whip contest, they had fireworks, and the people were, like, jumping through fire. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, my poor buddy Frank, he's old like me, and he races two races, and they put him right next to the uh, start here. I don't know if you can hear me, and it was just blasting the music. Right, this is the only spot left for him, right in his ear. Yeah, right next to the Frank speaker. Frank Lucina, what a great guy. Yeah. He actually took me to the first J-Day that I went to, so don't forget to check that oh, out. Oh, this was a cool bridge. So what does it take to be a top five rider or a top rider? Well, this is what we did this year. We traveled 1.3 times around the world going to races. You yeah. missed pretty much every kid's birthday party, every kid's sleepover. You like could practice if you wanted all the time out of your backyard because you have plenty of trails, and we drive hours to go practice in courses that make us feel like what the races are. Oh, here's where they make that mistake and say you're the leader. Yeah, so you hear them say that I'm in first overall and that they pull in the checkered flag for me, even though I wasn't even at the checkered flag yet. But uh, what were you saying before about what it takes again? Yeah, you know what? Saying that it takes great, great, great commitment. And, yeah. you know, this is a sport we're all supposed to be doing for fun, so if you're not ready to do that commitment, don't worry about it. Just go down and ride your dirt bike and have fun. But let's get back to the motocross here. So you are were in second place. Now you're in third, right? Yeah. Right. I'm in so third we, right now. you came out of the woods in second place, which was your highest uh, placing so far. And I happened to be standing on a spot where I saw you come out in second, and I saw you drop to third, and I was like, "Oh, still pretty good, third. That's not too bad." And then I decide to go over the berm. Yeah. Oh, into the soft stuff. Yeah. Ryan gets around me pretty easily, and now I'm back into third. The fourth. Fourth. Sorry. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I was in that red barn right there. So you saw me looking to the left there. Not only have I dropped down to fourth, but Jinx is on my tail and I could feel him wanting to pass me. And I'm like, I'm not gonna let it happen. So I finally clear a jump for once in my life. <laughs> and uh, Jinx doesn't pass me there. And I'm feeling good. So right here, look at the way, look at the difference. Oh. Yeah, look at the difference between the way that I seat bounce and Jig seat bounce. I'm like uh, kind of back on the seat, and then look at how far Jigs is. I mean, that's another thing with the motocross that I'm still learning how to do these huge jumps, and I didn't even know that like I was supposed to sit that far back, but I know now, so that's kind of cool. But it's kind of cool to see like the difference in the videos, how different people do things. Yeah, so we're so not familiar with motocross, but you always hear about people. You know, getting their motors modded, send them out to these big engine tuners, and we have been running completely stock motors. Like we haven't even opened up our motor, and you're still getting whole shots at GNCCs and still doing great even against these guys in the woods. And I don't know exactly what everyone's running, but many of them are running 105. Some of them even running 112s, which are on a crazy maintenance schedule. I mean, every five hours. Oh, we're showing you this because this is why we don't have Jigs passing us, but he did us. Yeah, him. Jigs. Jigs did get around me, but I didn't get it because the camera was facing straight up in the air because I kept hitting my head on the handlebars and in turn hitting the GoPro on the handlebars. So that's pretty much the end of the race, and we appreciate you watching. Please comment, please like and subscribe, and please check out some of our other videos. Thank you so much for checking it out, and we hope to see you at the next at the races. And looking forward to your comments. Yeah, guys, don't forget to check out the day one video and check our channel for GNCC videos, national enduro videos, and also that video that's coming out comparing all the different type of races. So subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.